Hello and welcome back to Mideast In-Depth. Akiva Eldar is featured in Al Monitor in a piece on Israel and it's titled Anyone But Bibi is Not a Diplomatic Initiative. The current election campaign is frighteningly reminiscent of the dramatic 1999 challenge by Labour Party leader Ehud Barak against the incumbent Prime Minister, Likud leader Benjamin Netanyahu. And after a three-year Netanyahu term, the parties to the left of Likud rode to the wave of disgust with the Prime Minister. Then, too, the hoarse cries of anyone but Bibi muted any attempt to conduct a series, serious debate about Labour's guiding principles, first and foremost to draw the outlines of a permanent arrangement with the Palestinians. The disappointment with Netanyahu provided Labour with sufficient impetus to retake power. Tisbi Livni, the minister in charge of negotiations with the Palestinians in the Ehud Olmert and the third Netanyahu governments, is giving her personal version for the collapse of the negotiations conducted last year with the mediation of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. In an interview with the New York Times, columnist Roger Cohen, Livni blames Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas. As the Labour Party's candidate for Prime Minister, for the Prime Minister, Livni argues that the PA's decision to join 15 international institutions rang the death knell for the negotiations and that Abbas's reconciliation agreement with Hamas was the final nail in the coffin. Livni reiterates her version that the negotiations failed because of Abbas's refusal to adopt the Kerry proposed plan proposed by him by US President Barack Obama. Kerry's plan included a demand for the Palestinians to recognize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. Anne Bernard, the Times' Beirut bureau, bureau chief covering Syria, Lebanon and other parts of the Middle East, is featured in the New York Times in an article titled As Syria's Revolution Sputters a Chaotic Stalemate. The writer argues that it was a victory that President Bashar al-Assad's opponents had dreamed of. Insurgents seized a key army base in northern Syria after more than a year of trying. The assault this month was led by the Nusra Front, al-Qaeda's arm in Syria, which claimed the spoils. By contrast, many of the first Syrians to rise up against Mr. Assad in 2011, civilian demonstrators and army defectors alike, followed the battle from the sidelines here, unable to enter Syria under the threat of death from extremists of Nusra and its rival group, the Islamic State. And as Syria's war heads toward its fourth year, Bernard believes the complex battleground is increasingly divided between the government and the extremists, leaving many Syrians feeling that the revolution on which they gambled their lives and livelihoods has failed. In northern and eastern Syria, where Mr. Assad's opponents won early victories and once dreamed of building self-government, the nationalist rebel groups calling themselves the Free Syrian Army are forced to operate under the extremists' umbrellas to go underground or to flee, according to Syrian insurgents, activists and two top commanders of the American finance FSA groups. The writer argues that the Syrian government is facing its own problems. While Mr. Assad appears unlikely to fall by force, he also seems unable to reassert full control over the country. Despite taking back most of the central city of Homs, government forces have not dislodged insurgents from the al Waya district. And for more updates, please visit Levant.tv. And subscribe to Mideast In-Depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.